The days are numbered from my come along. Three to four feet of pole, then reset, do it all over again. That gets tiring. What about a drill powered winch? 25 feet of length, three, four, five times the speed, and about the same load capacity. Let me show you how I built it. So here we have a worm drive winch. And the reason I'm using a worm drive winch instead of an inline winch is one, it has a lot lower gear ratio and ideal for a power tool, a cordless tool, so it won't burn it up. This one actually has a 40 to one ratio versus one that's just a, a set of gears that engage these, this cog and, and turns it. Um, the other reason is, is because if you do have one that just turns it, they don't actually self brake. Once you lift a load, if you're not holding on to the handle and you let the handle go or the little cog, the little um, the little tooth that holds it from going back, once you let that go, you've got to constantly maintain pressure on the handle. You let it go and this thing will just whip around and let the load free spool out. So this is better for lifting applications and stuff like that because the worm will never allow it to, to move. It's self-breaking. Now, first thing you do with this, this is rated for 2,000 pounds, but out of the box, these things will never handle what they claim. You can see how much slop this has in it. It moves a good eighth of an inch. And this right here was tightened down, but the bolt holes also. And so under load, this moves a good sixteenth of an inch. And the problem is, I'll loosen this up. I already got this all torn apart pretty much. Is this is actually only engaging, it's not engaging the full depth of the teeth like it should. It's actually once you push this back and this forward like it would under a heavy load, it's only grabbing maybe a third of the teeth. So it's just going to strip out, break off these teeth or wear them way down. But inside there, you have a tube that I got all greased up, and that wedges itself so it can't move, and that fits in here. But from the factory, it comes with no grease, and you can see how much slop in there. So I want to build a, a shim for there to take out that slop, as well as make so this doesn't slop around, so everything is just as tight as possible. So I've measured the difference between here, and I got about 80 thousandths. And so, and that's just half. So I need roughly forty thousandths material, and this copper just happens to be very close to forty thousandths. So this is going to be my shim material. Just, so made that into bushing. It's a little thick. I sanded it around the outside, but we have it now. I have one inserted in this side where it is nice and tight, and this will spin. And as soon as there's a major load on this. It'll loosen itself up, but I'll put one in from each side. But also, I took a little uh, bushing, made a little copper bushing because there's a ton of room there as well. So that'll go in there, and that lessens the uh, the amount of slop as well. We're good there, but now when I go to put this in, even when it's all the way lined up, I know it's going to be hard for you to see, but when it's tight to the thing, these bolt holes right here are still, I mean, they're 3 16ths of an inch off, eighth inch, at least, where they want to be away. And I want this as tight, I want these teeth as tight in there as possible so I got as much surface area. So, I could re-drill the holes, put a shim in there or something, but I'm just going to weld this piece on. There's really no reason this piece isn't welded on. So I got that all welded up. It's all nice and tight. It's all disassembled. But now I can put it all back together. Insert this in here. Put this all back in here. And this is what turns everything. And so we need to be able to attach the drill to here. And the easiest way is with a socket. And we're going to nullify the original handle that went on here with its little uh, double D shaft. And just put a, a bunch of, um, put a few nuts on there, stack them tall so we have a good wide surface, and then we'll just use sockets to actually do it. And I just... So we got all three nuts welded on, and so it gives us a nice tall surface. So when we use a deep socket or something to that effect, it a lot less wobble than it if it was just one. So we'll put this back together. 
So rather than attaching this to a receiver hitch or something to that effect, I attach the looper chain. That way I can get any pulling angle I want. If this was fixed, you put it in a receiver hitch into your vehicle, you can only pull at maybe about a 15 degree angle before you start binding. This way you could actually attach it around the receiver hitch. Uh, you could put it right over the ball if you wanted. That's not generally recommended. But then you could pull from any direction that you wanted to. You could just chain it to almost anything. I could put a loop through here, chain it around a tree. You can pull anything anywhere. So that'll do that. And I also picked up separately a snatch block that you put in line with this. So you would take this off and you'd loop this through here. This would hook onto whatever you're pulling and then the end would come back and loop here and it reduces the load by half. So the, the effort that this machine is working, it pulls half as slow but it reduces the load but it also doubles the capacity. So this could now actually, instead of just 2,000 pounds, it could theoretically pull 4,000 pounds without stressing this, overstressing this because half the load is pulling back on itself. Different, different subject. Let's go try this out. So we roughly got a 2,500 pound car. 1,500 pounds is probably the front. The back is probably about 1,000 pounds. There's some stuff in the trunk. That's just raw weight. So we're lifting roughly 1,000 pounds. Up the drill on high. Put on low. But that's the nice thing about a worm winch is you can let off whenever and it doesn't free spool. You can go backwards. Now I attach the snatch block down here so it just halves the load because the cable just comes out of the drum, goes down, loops up, and just hooks back on itself. So half the load is transferred to this and half the load is just transferred to whatever is holding it. But it moves half as slow, doubles the capacity, instead of 2,000 pounds, it could actually lift 4,000 pounds. And then we're going to bust out the, uh, the drill I converted to run off these lithium packs and see how that handles it. I don't think we'll have a problem. No problem on high, low would be even easier. It's actually working really nice and I think I can replace my uh, tried and true come along that only has a six foot pole and it's just tedious to wind in, wind out. If this works out, it's a thousand times faster. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to thumbs up, leave me a comment below. See you guys soon, bye. <laughs> They'll subscribe, don't worry. It's okay. They'll subscribe.